Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a journal share and once again I have to say I am in love with these. I am in love with these because of the idea of what they could be. So I'm super excited to share them with you. I have two traveler style notebooks here and then one large journal to share. So I'm going to try to move rather quickly so this project share isn't super long because I have a lot that I could say about them. So I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna start with the Traveler's Notebook. So both of these journals are Traveler's Notebook size. So they measure about four and a half. Actually, it's pretty chunky. It would poke out a little bit, but if you're a junk journaler anyway, you're used to that. But the journal itself measures about four and a half inches and then eight and a quarter inches tall. Here's a journal cover that I'm in the process of making for myself so you can kind of see how it fits inside of the notebook. But then again, you don't have to have a traveler's notebook to use this journal. It is absolutely beautiful all by itself. This journal used to be a feed sack. Not exactly a feed sack. It had like, not protein powder, but like a powdered milk in it. It was from Argentina and I just thought it was so much fun. My mom had given me a couple years ago that I was planning on doing something in the house with. I still have one of them but I really wanted to try making journals out of it because I thought it was so much fun. This is just a coffee dyed seam binding and I added this little picture here and I'll tell you my thoughts on what the journal could be here in a minute. First I want to show you the um, cover. So this particular journal has the word Argentina across it. That's where it came from. Um, 50 kilos. I just thought that was fun. It's going up and down with the print and then I just added some laces to kind of frame the journal with. The seam binding just has this picture on it just as a pretty decorative piece. And as far as pages go, I'm going to talk about it in like if you were looking at a book and you flip to the page so one side is one the other side is two you know what I'm saying I don't know why it is so hard for me to talk about pages but if it were like a book this would have 80 pages in it that is not including the pages that flip out with extra journaling space so there are 40 different elements in this book which make up 80 flippable pages so yeah okay getting into the journal because I don't want this to be super long I have used the feed sack here and then it's lined with scrapbook paper on the inside. There's lots of fun stitching, tea stain papers, book paper, scrapbook papers, some stamping, lace and trims, and then more of that feed sack. So here on the front, I've just made a little pocket here. There's a pocket at the top you can tuck something into. There's a lace pocket here. There's a frame and then this tag pulls out and you can journal on that as well. Here in the front, this is a pocket here that you could slip something into. Throughout the book, I've used this book that was about growing tomatoes. It was from the 70s and I just thought it was a lot of fun. So I made a flip out here and it has a couple little pockets that you could keep some paper in. This is just some scrap paper that I stitched together and have a little stamp there at the bottom. Here is just some pretty trims and stitching and stamping. This book here is an old Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. So I made a pocket out of that. This whole set, I bought a couple sets of these journaling cards. They were actually sold for labels in an Etsy shop. I'll, I don't remember the name of it, but I will leave a link down below. So these are just some really fun images. I backed it with some tea stain paper to kind of make it match the rest of the book. And then I just have it clipped with some plaid paper clip ribbons. I left them a little long. You can trim them down if you don't like it that long. To me, it's better to leave that up to you. Yeah. So here... On this page and this ribbon, I just added a couple little garment pins. This one has a little coffee cup here, and this one just has a dangle bead here. 
here's a tea stain glassine bag pocket and again just more strap paper that I stitched together here is some graph paper Jessica from I'm a cool mom has been doing this in her books and I just absolutely love it I have vellum and I barely ever use it so thank you Jessica for this idea she stitched the vellum onto her pocket here so I added another journaling card in this front pocket and then in the back just a big tag for extra space some of that vintage address book that I have from the 60s that is so much fun some tracing paper here I've just made a little tuck spot. I stitched a piece of doily and some ribbon on here. And here's another journaling card. Here is a business envelope with a large window. I thought that was a lot of fun. I stitched a piece of doily on here and then you can just pull this tag out. Of course it doesn't want to go back in. extra journaling there. so that's a super fun window I tucked a little or I stitched a piece on here to be a tuck spot so you can put something in there then this flips out little music note pocket with another one of those journaling cards tracing paper then here I have just another little vintage score sheet and I fussy cut that barn out of a piece of paper for a tuck spot. Another one of Jessica's pockets. I added that journaling card and then that tag. Draft paper. Another pocket. And here, another flip out. Some pretty trim. My thought with these journals originally were, well, they are a country a farm recipe, you know, type journal. But the more I made, the more I was working on them, I really thought, if this were my journal, pocket there. I would probably personally keep family recipes in it. You know those recipes that you always want grandma's casserole at Thanksgiving or your mom always made those great cookies at Christmas. To me this would be an awesome kind of journal. This whole set would be awesome to keep those kind of things in as an heirloom to pass on. You know especially these days when everything's so computerized it would just that's what I would use it for. Of course, you can use it for absolutely anything. Regular journaling, anything that has to do with the kitchen. But me personally, that's what I would do with this journal. I just think it's fun. So here's a belly band. Just a scrap paper that I stuck in here. The other side of that glassine bag. And I just made a little notepad with some scraps. Love that one. Another recipe paper here. And here's another little garment pin with a bead. Then the other side of this tomato book. And this one has some scrap paper in here. There's another pocket here. I just thought that was a fun image. And then there's another pocket like in the front. And then here. There's a tag tucked in here. There's also a pocket here and then a pocket there. So that is the first journal. Here is the second journal. This one has a fun little square picture on it and you can see the way that these charms hang along the side. Some laces and those ribbons again. Again, it's just Literally, the seam binding is in a knot. I slipped that picture on there and then tied the rest of the bow. So whoever gets this journal, in case that's confusing, that's all I did there. This journal, you can see down the center, it said industrial. I thought that was fun. 
So then here on the inside of this cover, I have this scrapbook paper with a tag here and then another lace pocket with a tag. Another one of those pockets, another tomato book. This one has a pocket here on the side, which I flip some scrap paper in. So if any of you are wondering what, how would I use this page? Absolutely. You can just put pictures right on top of it. That's the fun thing. You could glue a handwritten recipe here and just leave the tomatoes. You could add some paint and cover it up. There's so many things you could do. And I just love the images of these tomato plants. I here. I think it's fun. Okay. So some more trims here. And these books are very similar. These two. Here is another old recipe sheet, journaling cards, garment pin here, fun transfer. I love that. A glass bean bag, another one of those pockets. And it's so similar. I'm going to flip a little quicker through this one. Another one of those envelopes. Those are fun. I'm going to be using those more often. Another tuck. Just flips out. A music sheet pocket here. Oops. And tracing paper. Another one of those barn tuck spots there. And here's another pocket. And here, there's, I put a little scrap knit book in there. Some practice paper, and then it's another pocket here. Another pocket here with some scrap paper tucked in the side. My belly bands. glass bean bag, little scrap paper tucked in there. Here's another little garment pin with that coffee cup on there. And then here is another tomato book page. It flips out. And then another pocket. And then here on the back, one has a pocket up top and then a pocket on the bottom. And then this book has 38 flippable pages. All right, so then the big journal. After I played around and created those traveler's notebooks, I really wanted to make a bigger journal because I started thinking about how awesome it would be if someone truly wanted to use it as a keepsake book. Of course, there's a lot of things you could use it for other than the recipe book. You could use it as a regular journal. You could use it to keep family memories in, photographs of holidays like Thanksgiving, um, if you wanted to keep it specific. Anyway, there's so many awesome things. I would love to have a journal like this myself. So I'm probably gonna be making one. So this is the largest journal I've made so far. The binding is two and a half inches wide. It is a big one and I love it. The covers are about five and a half inches that direction and it is eight and a half inches tall. So this is a nice sized journal. On the front, I've just wrapped it with some seam binding that's been coffee stained. And then I've just added this little fork and spoon. They are removable if you don't want them there. I think they are so cute. The other thing about this that I feel like I wanna mention, I mean, it just adds to the charm of the journal. Obviously I've tea stained all my papers and the feed sack itself, it's been used, you know, it was probably thrown on the back of a truck. It has a lot of this natural staining on there and I just think that is so cool. So let's get into this puppy. Here, I've just um, tied the fork and the spoon onto the seam binding so you could easily move it if it becomes too full or if you take out a lot of the fillers that I have in here. 
and it becomes smaller, you just easily untie those and put them where you want them. To give you an idea of what this journal looks like on the outside, here is the main area of that bag, and I think it is so much fun. Normansa, I don't know, <laughs> brand 30 mesh. This is where it said Argentina produce across the bottom, and then here it said something like lactose casein or something. Anyway, super fun bag. So then this book, I counted it, has 197 pages. There are four signatures in here, and that's counting the doily as a flippable page. So then here on the inside, something that I think is so much fun, the back of this cover is also part of the feed sack, and the way that it's stitched through the machine where it comes up here at the corner, it also does it on the back where it comes down. I love that. I think it adds a lot of charm to the fact that it is a food sack and it had food in it. And when you think about throwing a bag, a feed sack on the back of a truck, think of how it warps when the food is in it. And to me that just, yeah, that's what a feed sack does. It has that natural bend and motion. And I just think that adds so much charm to the journal. So that is how my brain works, you guys, but I just love that element and knowing what that actually is. So anyway, getting into the journal because there's a lot to flip through here. I used a completely different paper stack on this and um, here on the front, I just added this fabric cover of a little boy feeding a rooster and I have this, this book belongs to tag tucked in here. So then here on this front page, there is a pocket, some more of the feed sack. Let's just get into it. Here's another pocket here. Here's another tomato page. Another one of those envelopes with the tag. Here I've added some more of these pages and I haven't printed them off yet for the other journals, but I will include them there as well. I've shared this book before in one of my journal videos. This is from the late 1800s, right before 1900. And I have not, they are not the actual book pages because this book means so much to me. I've actually photocopied this onto some tea stain paper. Today I have some parchment paper coming that has a natural aged look to it. And because the tea stain paper keeps jamming in my printer, I'm um, going to print it on the parchment paper for the other books. So I haven't gotten that done yet, but I will. These are just so much fun to read. It is etiquette from the late 1800s how men and women should behave in public. And I just it brings such a smile to my face that I love passing them along <laughs> in my journals. Um, so yeah, this is just a fun read. Etiquette of carriage writing. Okay, so that's just tucked in there for fun. Here is a table linen piece that I've made into a pocket and I just have added an index card here. There's some ribbon stitched across the bottom, tracing paper. center of the signature, I just have these double pockets with some tea stain paper tucked inside. The other side of that linen pocket with an index card, and then I just have this little cute envelope with some tea stain paper inside. I thought that was cute. The back of that linen page, and just a little label tucked up there. And here's a pocket you can keep some things in. Another tomato gardening page. This journal has all of the pages inked around it. There's some lace and some pretty trim there. And there's a garment pin with a coffee cup. Another pocket with a tag. And here's another pocket you could store some items in. You could also map some photos on here. Um, a little music note pocket here. Here is a 
crochet doily tucked on the inside. Another pocket. This is a recipe book that I had from the 50s. It is a very traditional thinking book and she wrote so many funny things about how her husband felt about her cooking and he's always grouchy in the things that he says. So I don't know, there's a lot of people that would not enjoy this type of book, but um, I loved, loved the images and I just think it's so much fun that they're cows. So I put this in here and it does have a little bit of, you know, stuff about cooking on the back. This is an old ball blue book from the 80s. So I thought that was fun to put in there. Some more of that old wrapping paper that I have in my stash. I'm not sure exactly how old this is. I know it's at least from the 80s, but I loved that gingham print. Another pocket here. And this flips out. Tracing paper. Another pocket. Center of the signature and this I just tuck some scrap paper in. A little paper tag bag here. Just have that card in there and another little tag there. Pocket. Another pocket and just stuck a tag in there. The other side of that recipe book. The pocket. And here's another side of that tomatoes. And here I just made a little tuck spot pocket. Added some old ledger paper that I have. It's beautifully aged. <laughs> I just love that paper. Then here's another little pocket here some paper, little charm, another one of those envelopes, it will tell you the spot on the envelope that is folded in because it's a business envelope. It's a little tricky to get that tag back down in there, but you just have to hold it out. Here's another little tuck spot here. It's a pocket with an old vintage score sheet. In this signature, I used an old lady's hanky as a pocket, and I just stitched it down the side here so you can put some keepsakes in there. I just added a piece of tea stain paper for now. Another double pocket here. The only thing with this one is when I was stitching on this ribbon, I went into this pocket, but no worries. I actually haven't done it yet, but whoever uses this journal, I'm going to tuck. I'm going to create a tag. This one's just a little too big that fits into this area of the pocket here. So there will be a tag with this book. And then this journaling card is just sitting in there. Another little garment pin here. Center of the signature and then just put some extra paper in here. Another little pocket here. This is actually an envelope. And then I added some paper. I always send extras with my journals too, so there'll be some more things that you'll receive if you make this journal yours. The doily scrap here. Here's the other side of that hanky, which is a pocket, and you can put something inside. Another one of those book pages, Charming Beautiful Homes. And I thought this one was fun to add because it talks about how rude it is to let your goats and chickens and pigs go tear up somebody else's landscaping. So if you're allowing that to happen, you really shouldn't. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun. So that is included and then it's etiquette on the street how men and women should greet each other and whatnot super fun and then here's another little pocket here some tracing paper another pocket this here is another pocket i'll just put that tag in there another tomato book 
another page from that 80s ball blue book on canning. This I added a little table linen, which I thought was super fun and delicate. It already has some coffee staining here or something, so it blends in perfectly with the book. Just really pretty piece. Then here's some trim with a little charm hanging here. Another music note pocket. Here's a flip out. This is a belly band here that you can stick something in. Here's another page from that 50s cookbook. Just thought that image was fun. Another pocket. Etiquette of visiting, how to behave in someone's parlor, when, where, and how to visit. Another fun page, which that's just fun ephemera, but I love that book so much. <laughs> Here's another little pocket here. Here's a tuck spot and a pocket with a tag some trim that I added to the outside of this pocket and then just for fun I stuck a piece of ephemera in here from an old what were these called the name escapes me but they're like those not food stamps but green stamps that you would collect and use at the grocery store I have some of those my mom wonderfully shared with me and just for fun a piece of ephemera I stuck that in here another little pocket here and a pocket there Tracing paper. This is some, um, it must have not shown that page, but it's like a blue jean print wrapping paper, old wrapping paper again. Another little pocket. The other side of that linen. And the back of the book, which has this pretty lady on fabric washing clothes with a fun tag tucked inside. So that is my recipe heirloom journal, at least in my mind, or whatever else it is that you feel <laughs> would be awesome for this journal. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I will have a link to my Etsy shop down below if you want to check it out. Again, I'm over at Instagram if you want to be friends and follow me over there. My name is cheaply underscore chic underscore. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have an awesome weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye!